Alright, hi everyone. So today I'm going to go through um, the different hostels and hotels that we stayed at. Um, I'm going to break this video up into sections because if I don't, it's going to become really long and boring. Um, John is not here today. He's busy, so you just get me. Sorry. Um, so the first place that we stopped was in Neal's Gap. We stayed at the Blood Mountain Cabins. Uh, we weren't planning to stop at Neal's Gap, but due to my IT band issue that I was having, we had to stop somewhere. Um, so we did stop at the Blood Mountain Cabins. You cannot make a reservation at the Blood Mountain Cabins. You have to, if you're a through hiker, you have to go to the place and see if they have something available. So luckily when we got there, they had one cabin left. Um, I believe the cabin was like $72 which really wasn't all that bad um, for what we got. Uh, we had two bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen, living room, obviously, um, and then like a deck that overlooked a really pretty creek. Um, it was a little more than we would have wanted to spend um, just because we were just starting our hike, but you know, it was worth it because of the IT band. IT band issues I was having and because that night it got really really cold so I'm thankful that we stayed there it wasn't the cleanest of places but you know I'm I'm happy it was there <laughs> so and it, it did it did wonders for me so um also if you're planning on vlogging and you want to upload videos uh, Neil's Gap is probably not the best place to do that it took us like six hours, I think, to upload one video. So yeah, I'd probably wait till the next town. Uh, the next place we stayed was in Hiawassee and we stayed at the Holiday Inn Express. Um, we did not stay at Top of Georgia Hostel because we heard that the resupply was not very good and I believe they're now closed indefinitely. So, uh, and then the other, option to stay is um, the budget Inn, and they have a shuttle that'll come and get you from the trailhead and everything but they were sold out so we stayed at the holiday Inn express we had to hitch into town um which was fine we got a ride pretty quickly uh hiawassee is a good little hiker town um i believe there was an outfitter but it wasn't open when we got into town um the, there's restaurants all around within walking distance um, and there's a grocery store there, like a legit grocery store there um, that's within walking distance too. So the only bad thing about staying at the Holiday Inn Express is that you have to hitch in and hitch out, but it's not too difficult. Um, next place we stayed was in Franklin, North Carolina. We stayed at Gooder Grove. Gooder Grove was our first experience staying in a hostel, and um, it was a it was a great experience. Um, the owner Zen, he was super duper nice. Um, he's really really helpful. Will do anything for hikers. Um, he shuttled us around to a bunch of different places that we needed to go. He took one guy even to like Asheville to catch a air, catch a plane. So. Um, yeah, it was a really good good place, a good experience, especially for our first time staying in a hostel. Uh, the We got a private room, and I believe it was somewhere around 40-ish dollars. And um, they also do your laundry, which that is a huge, huge bonus in my book. Because when I get somewhere, the last thing I want to do is laundry. Like, I'm tired, I want to take a shower, and I want to eat. And I want to eat and I want to eat and I want to eat so laundry is the last thing that I want to do if I get to a hostel and they do your laundry oh my god game changer so even if you have to spend like five extra dollars or whatever like to me that was totally worth it uh, to not have to spend the time to do the laundry um, so yeah it was really nice Franklin the town of Franklin is super duper cute um, everything was within walking distance of Gooder Grove. Um, was kind of like located right next to the downtown area or the main street area. Um, Gooder Grove has a fantastic outfitter, Outdoor 76. Um, it has a couple of good restaurants, it has a bakery, 
and the grocery store is also within walking distance too. There are a couple of other hostels in that area. Uh, I don't even know the names of them. Um, but I believe that Chica and Sunsets, they hiked the trail in 2017. And I believe that they're opening a hostel in uh, Franklin. I don't know if it's going to be this coming up year or when it's going to be. But um, yeah, so I'm just giving you the options of where we stayed. I would definitely check out Gut Hook and your AWOL guide whenever you're near a town just to see what other options there are because, you know, you may enjoy another place more than... Um, where we stayed. Uh, but yeah, Gooder Grove, they'll shuttle you, pick you up from the trailhead, all that good jazz. So it was a good, good uh, place. Next stop was in Fontana, North Carolina. And this was right before the Smokies. We stayed at the Fontana Village Lodge. Um, they, they sell out very quickly. Uh, they're a little pricey. Um, it's like a resort type little area. Um, they have a place for you to resupply. They have a place for you to do laundry. They have on-site restaurants. Um, everything's gonna be a little bit more pricier. Uh, so like the resupply was pricier there than if you like shuttled into a nearby town to go to a grocery store. But convenience, you know, you only have X amount of time to get stuff done, so. We kind of just had to resupply there. Um, but it was a nice place to stay. The food was really good. Um, I don't really have anything negative to say about it, except that you do need to make a reservation and you do need to make it early, especially if you're in the bubble like we were. Um, next place we stayed. So after we got done with the Smokies, my parents came and picked us up and we went into Asheville with them and we stayed in a hotel there. Um, I am not going to go into where we stayed in Asheville because Asheville is kind of like, I mean, it's far away from the trail, not really something that most through hikers are gonna do once they get done with Smokies. They're not gonna try to find a shuttle to Asheville and go <laughs> stay. Um, but I know there's a hostel like right when you get done with the Smokies called Standing Bear. I don't really know too much about it. Um, so that's an option for, you know, people if they're finishing the Smokies, they wanna go to a hostel, recharge their batteries. Um, so after we stayed in Asheville, then we had, we hiked two days to Hot Springs. Um, Hot Springs, we stayed with my parents again in an Airbnb, so we didn't stay in a hostel uh, in Hot Springs. But Hot Springs is a really cute town. It has everything that you would need or want. Um, it has a couple of really good restaurants. It has an outfitter. Um, it has a resupply. Uh, I think the resupply there is like a Dollar General. Um, so again, my parents were there, so they took us to a nearby town where there was a grocery store. So we actually got to, um, you know, grocery shop. But I think that the only options for resupply in Hot Springs are, are uh, the Dollar General and a gas station, I believe. But um, yeah, Hot Springs is, is your typical hiker town. Um, it's definitely a, a good place to stop. Um, next place that we stayed was in Roan, Tennessee, and we stayed at the Mountain Harbor Hostel. Now, we only, we stayed at the Mountain Harbor Hostel because we had a resupply box going there, and also because the other hostel that's in town there, which is the station at 19E, does not offer private rooms. Um, and at that point in time, we're still kind of sketched out about sleeping in bunks with a bunch of people. And as you'll see throughout our journey, we don't really ever stay in a hostel with a bunch of bunks. We would rather have a private room. Um, we're a couple. We kind of want space away from other people. We're, we'll interact with people, but 
you know, we want time away. <laughs> um, so yeah, we stayed at Mountain Harbor Hostel. It, I thought personally that it was a little expensive for what we, what we got for the accommodations. Um, I kind of felt like it was a little, it was very busy because it was raining that day. So there were tons of people there, but it kind of felt a little chaotic. And the um, washer and dryer laundry situation, so they don't do your laundry for you. You have to like wait until one becomes available. And it's kind of a pain because you're like walking back from your room, back to the, to the laundry place to see if something came available. And then, I don't know, it just felt like it took forever for us to be able to wash our clothes. Um, yeah, so they did have a breakfast and they also had like a food truck there, which was awesome because it's not within walking distance of anything. So if you need to go to the store, if you need to go resupply, um, you have to ask them to shuttle you into town, which it's not far, but um, I think your only option there is a Dollar General and a gas station as well. So, um, we were lucky because we had some wonderful trail angels, Tom and Linda, that uh, dropped us off a resupply box there, so we didn't have to resupply. Um, but if I had to do it again, I would have probably stayed at the station at 19E just because I've heard some really great things about that place. And I think they have like a brewery or something and like they have food there too. So I don't know, like I, it was pretty new. Um, I think it's only like two or three years old. So I don't know, it, either one is fine. It, it wasn't like it was a horrible place, but uh, I think I would have liked to have stayed at the station 19E. Um, next place that we stayed was Boots Off Hostel. And one thing I wanna mention uh, also about I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, about the Fontana Village Lodge, Mountain Harbor Hostel, and uh, the place I'm about to talk, talk about right now, Boots Off Hostel. They're all within walking distance of the trail. So um, you don't need a shuttle to get there, which is amazing. Um, I think... Well, I don't know, but I think maybe, I think the station at 19E, you do have to get a shuttle to come pick you up. But um, yeah, the Fontana Village Lodge, Mountain Harbor Hostel, um, and Boots Off Hostel were all within walking distance of the trail. So Boots Off Hostel, we didn't actually stay in a room there because they only have a bunkhouse. Um, we tented and there's also some little cabins. They're, they're really tiny cabins. Um, and I don't know, I guess we just didn't want to spend the money to stay in a really tiny cabin um, because at the time they didn't have air conditioner or heat or anything like that. So we were just happy staying in our tent anyways. Um, but the showers there are amazing. Uh, <laughs> I did walk into the bunkhouse and it was pretty cool. Um, they do have some resupply options at the hostel. Um, it's limited though, of course. And then they do have like this cool community room where everybody can kind of hang out. Uh, they have like an outdoor deck with um, picnic tables and things like that. So it was a cool place. It's also um, right next to this huge lake that you're not able, uh, like they, camping is forbidden there but we went there and went swimming and it was fun. Um, but yeah, Boots Off Hostel, they have a shuttle that will take you into town. I think it goes, it's like at five o'clock or six o'clock at night. And there's a McDonald's, there may be like another fast food restaurant. Um, and then there's a Dollar General and a gas station. Those are your options for resupply. So they'll take you into town. We hit up McDonald's really quick and then we went to Dollar General and that was that, so 
it was a cool place, cool experience. Um, good place to stay. Uh, so the next place that we stayed was in Damascus, Virginia. And we stayed at the Hikers Inn. And obviously, uh, Damascus, Virginia, you just literally, the trail goes right through Damascus. So you don't need a shuttle. Um, the Hikers Inn, it was, it didn't even feel like a hostel. Um, it's, it's an old house. And the guy, Paul, is a former, or it was a through hiker. He hiked, uh, I don't even remember what year he hiked, but he through hiked. Um, and the, the house is like super duper nice. Like we stayed in a private room and it wasn't very expensive either. So we actually, we narrowed there and then we zeroed um, because it just was worth it. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't that expensive to where we were like, oh no, we like can only stay here one night. Like we were like, oh, this place is amazing. Like we're gonna stay again. Um, but yeah, so it was super duper clean. Like the bathroom, I felt like I was in a hotel room. Honestly, it was, it was really nice. Um, so I would definitely recommend that place. Uh, they they have a bunkhouse, um, and then they have like he has like this backyard where everybody can hang out. He doesn't offer any kind of meal options, but it really doesn't matter because there are. I mean, you're right in the middle of Damascus, so you can go eat at the restaurants there. Uh, Damascus has, I think, like three outfitters there and they're all within walking distance. The grocery store is a little far, um, but it's still walkable. There's a Dollar General that is very close by. We resupplied at the Dollar General. Um, and yeah, I just, I really liked Damascus. It was, it was obviously it's Hiker Town USA. So <laughs> it, it had everything that a hiker could want and need and it was a cool place to chill. So um, hikers in Damascus, Virginia, definitely recommend. Um, next place we stayed was in Marion, Virginia. And we stayed at the Relax Inn. I am just going to say that I do not recommend staying at the Relax Inn. It was extremely cheap, um, which was great, but it just wasn't my kind of place. Um, it's a hotel, motel type deal. Um, you know, obviously you have to do your own laundry. Uh, Oh, hi, uh, Hikers Inn, they do your laundry. Just letting you know, Damascus, Hikers Inn, they do your laundry. Okay. Um, yeah, so Relax Inn, I just wouldn't, uh, I just wouldn't recommend it. I don't know where else you could stay in Marion, Virginia. Um, there were some other hotels, maybe, but... It just wasn't, it wasn't a great town as far as hiker needs, I guess. And just the place we stayed wasn't that great. Um, I mean, there's a McDonald's, there's a good Mexican restaurant there. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. If you're gonna stay in Marion, Virginia, stay, find another place. Also in Marion, Virginia, you have to get a shuttle that will take you to any place to stay. Uh, you'll get to this like hiker center and they'll have a list of phone numbers of people that you can call to get a shuttle. Um, we had this older gentleman, super, super nice. He came, to, he came and picked us up. I think he charged us like $10 or maybe it was a, he asked for a donation of $10 or something. Uh, for a ride and I was glad to 
give it to him. I think that was the only place or the only bo the only plus of going to Marion, Virginia was um, the shuttle driver. Uh, he was fantastic. He was great. He was super nice. His son through hiked the year before. So yeah, I love people like him. Um, the next place we stayed was in Daleville, Virginia. We stayed at the Super 8. Um, the good thing about Daleville is you basically walk right into town. Um, there is a Howard Johnson on one side of the street and the Super 8 on the other. We heard that the Super 8 was a lot nicer than the Howard Johnson and there were a lot more hikers at the Super 8. So we stayed there. There was a good little Mexican restaurant right in front of it. Um, about 0 .4, 0 0.5 miles down the road, there was the grocery store and an outfitter and a couple other little restaurants. Um, so yeah, the Super 8 was nice. Again, we ended up narrowing and zeroing there. Because uh, man, we were tired by that time. <laughs> So yeah, we, we kind of took our time through Virginia, I guess you could say. But yeah, Super 8 was great. One of the nicest Super 8s I've ever seen. Um, then shortly after that, um, so I was having a pretty bad day and we we're, we're still in Virginia. And uh, one of the girls that we were hiking around, Bubbles, she was telling me about um, a hostel that she was going to go to and she was saying that the food was amazing and it's supposed to be like this all natural kind of place and like it was 0.4 miles off trail just kind of in the middle of nowhere and uh, so it kind of piqued my interest a little bit because I was really hungry and I just kind of wanted to take a shower and you know have a sense of normalcy I guess. Well, um, we heard a bunch of other people talking that day too, and they were all saying that they were gonna stay there too. So when we got to the little intersection where it was like, okay, you can go this way towards the hostel or you can keep going down the trail. I was like, John, let's just, let's just go. Let's just go to Woods Hole. So we did. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, it was extremely beautiful the grounds were just gorgeous like the house the bunkhouse the showers everything was beautiful but it is expensive we didn't stay in the bunkhouse we tented and it was pretty expensive just to tent there um, and then they do provide breakfast at a cost and uh, dinner at a cost. We did not pay for the breakfast. We did pay for the dinner. Um, it is all natural. It's like it comes directly out of their garden. Um, so we did not, so the food that night was actually like a Japanese or Chinese whatever themed uh, food and neither John or I like that. <laughs> so darn. <laughs> um, so yeah, the dinner wasn't my favorite, but um, it was beautiful, just a little pricey. Not really our cup of tea. I don't know, it, maybe for others, it, it might be somewhere that they would like to stay. Um, but you know, it is what it is, it was, it was really nice. So, And there was a woman there, she was actually a doctor, um, a podiatrist, and she uh, like, that was there to do trail magic and she was rubbing everyone's feet and she actually went out on trail for like the next couple days and like just went to shelters and stuff and like um gave hikers foot massages and like helped them with any foot issues they were having so oh my god like how amazing is that <laughs> so that was pretty nice it was a cool place to just like chill and hang out because they have a lot of like I don't know, lounge places where you can just relax. So I don't know, it was a nice little stop. I don't know if, we wouldn't stop there again. Um, but you know, whatever. Oh, if you do wanna just drop in there though, they have like, uh, I think they make bread there and they also have like all these different types of cheese and stuff. So 
you know, when you're hungry and you just want to get a little snack or whatever and you know Woods Hole Hostel's coming up, just go in there, pop in there, get some stuff, and then go about your way because Parisburg is literally like 14 miles away walking. So the next day, we had already had our reservation at Angel's Rest, um, so we kind of, Woods Hole Hostel is kind of like a last minute decision to do. So we stayed in, the next day we stayed in Parisburg, Berg, Virginia. We stayed at Angel's Rest. Uh, they have a shuttle that comes and gets you. Um, everything is within walking distance. They have, they actually have like a little trail um, that takes you into town. So it's really cute. Um, but yeah, Angel's Rest was really nice. We had our private room and uh, you have to do your own laundry there. Um, but yeah, like the grocery store, there is a Mexican restaurant, Dairy Queen, uh, that's all within walking distance of the hostel. And it was super, super easy to get there. Probably less than like a half a mile. Um, so yeah, I would definitely stay at Angel's Rest again. It was not expensive at all. So it was definitely worth the money. Um, just a couple more places, I swear. Uh, next place we stayed was in Waynesboro, Virginia. We stayed at the Quality Inn. Um, Waynesboro was right before the Shenandoahs. Um, I don't remember there being a hostel in uh, Waynesboro. So I think that's why we stayed at the Quality Inn. The Quality Inn, it was nice, it was all right. Um, there were a ton of hikers there. Um, there is a church in Waynesboro that will allow hikers to stay there. It's a Lutheran church. I don't know a lot about it, but I know um, there was, there were at least eight or 10 hikers staying there. Um, but yeah, you do have to get a shuttle um, into Waynesboro from where the AT is. Uh, there's a list, they have a, a list of people that you can call um, once you get up to the intersection. And we had a really nice guy that came and picked us up. It was a Sunday morning. He was in his Sunday best. <laughs> and it was just so nice. Like, he was he was so nice to come and get us. And um, There's a outfitter there. It's a little far from the hotel. Um, it's almost a mile walk. And that almost a mile walk feels like forever. So, unless you don't really need to go to the outfitter, I would not suggest it because it was a long walk. Um, but it's very, it was very close by to um, lots of different restaurants. It was right near downtown. So like we walked around downtown, we got, we went to this pizza place. We had like these huge uh, slices of pizza. It was amazing. Um, I really liked Waynesboro. I thought it was super duper cute. And um, I love towns that are walkable like that. Um, there was a Walmart grocery store that was just across the street. Perfect. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought it was such an awesome little, little city. Um, next place we stayed at, oh, I love this town. Oh my God. Uh, next place we stayed was in Front Royal, Virginia. Uh, we stayed at the Quality Inn. Um, again, when you, after you get done with the Shenandoahs and you're going into Front Royal, you do have to get a shuttle or hitchhike, whatever. Um, but yeah, we stayed at the Quality Inn. It was okay. It wasn't the best, but it, whatever. Uh, they had laundry and everything. Um, and, but it really wasn't within walk, it was within walking distance of everything, but to get to the grocery store, it was it was kind of a far walk. Um, there's another hotel just on the other side called, uh, it was, I think it was a Super 8, and there may be a couple other hostels in the area, I'm not sure. Um, but Front Royal is awesome. It must stop place. Uh, there's two different outfitters in, this, in the town. Um, the post office is right there. 
Uh, there's some really awesome places to eat. There's the Hiker Base Camp. Now, the Hiker Base Camp is amazing. And if every trail town had one of these, oh my God, like every hiker would be, your dreams would be made. So the Hiker Base Camp is basically um, a bakery and a brewery attached to this hiker base camp where it, it's like inside, okay? It's not like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. You have to watch the video to see. But you walk through the bakery and you they obviously know that you're through hiking because you look like a hot mess. Um, and they, they let you into the little hiker base camp area. Um, only hikers can go in there. They don't just let anybody in there. You have to have like a special security code to get in there. They have lockers where you can put your pack. They have free showers. They have laundry machines where you can do your laundry for free. Now this is all donation based. Obviously you should leave a donation, but it was amazing. So like we got there, we couldn't even check into our hotel yet because the people at the front desk were just cruel so we went to the hiker base camp we both took showers and we did our laundry and like hung out there all day I think I ate like five pounds of baked goods from the bakery and then we went to the brewery and had <laughs> dinner um, but yeah front row is awesome the Wi-Fi there is fantastic like in the in the town itself like they have their own Wi-Fi <sighs> amazing so yeah front royals definitely catered towards hikers um i would like to go back there and just like visit because i thought it was such a cool town so uh next place that we stayed was in harper's ferry virginia and we stayed at the quality in there now we didn't really plan this so we got into harper's ferry and our plan was to go to the ATC. We were meeting our trail angels, um, Kathy and Scott, and we were gonna hang out with them for a little bit. Uh, we had to do some resupply and different things like that. Um, but yeah, we just ended up having so much fun with Scott and Kathy <laughs> um, that we were like, oh, I don't really wanna go back out on trail and hike, but I know we should. <laughs> So we didn't. Um, we actually hung out with um, a couple friends of ours that were um, having to get off trail. So after Scott and Kathy dropped us off, we went and had dinner with them. And then by the time that all kind of happened, it was really late. So we just stayed at the Quality Inn. It was so expensive. It was like, it was, it was not cheap. Uh, there's a hostel there in Harper's Ferry, and I so wish that I could have talked John into staying at the hostel, um, but he just wasn't into it. Um, but yeah, so we stayed at the Quality Inn. It was soup. It was it was a really nice place, um, but yeah, it was expensive. But it's Harper's Ferry, so you kind of have to expect that. Um, Harper's Ferry, the town, is not really what I expected it to be. Um, Kind of, to me, it wasn't necessarily very hiker friendly. I don't know, maybe like other people think, thought it is or think that it is, but to me it wasn't. The outfitter was super, super small. Um, and there were some places to eat there, um, but it's a beautiful town. It was, it was really pretty just to walk through it. So I don't know. If you want to stay there, you can. If you don't, you don't. But you have to walk through the town anyways because that's where the trail goes. So you might as well just make a stop and eat somewhere and hang out for a little bit. So, yeah. All right, so that is Georgia to Virginia. This is the video one of hostels and hotels. If you have any questions about any of the places that I mentioned, um, comment on this video. Let me know. Um, I want to mention that I know we've been getting a ton of questions and 
I can give you my, my um, opinion on things or my experience, but you know what? Like, you need to experience it. Like, that's what it's all about. That's what the trail is all about, is your experience. So, I, I mean, I, I kind of, like some of the questions that we get, I don't even want to answer, because I'm like, you're gonna find out, you're gonna figure it out. Like, it, it, it seems very complicated, I know. I know, like, thinking about resupplying and thinking about, you know, having to get, um, you know, if you have to stop at an outfitter or, you know, um, hitchhiking and shuttling and all that stuff, it seems very stressful and very scary and whatnot, but it's not, it's really not. Like once you get out there, you're gonna meet so many people that are just sent from God <laughs> that um, you, you're just, it, it's an experience in itself. So like, don't worry about all that stuff. Like don't freak out about it. it it will take care of itself and you'll figure it out. Okay, now let me record the second part of this video. Um, but that was the first part, Georgia to Virginia. Okay, see you next time, bye.